So what can omni-channel messaging bring to the metaverse? You know, so this is the session you've all been waiting for, right, to, to answer this question. What the heck does omni-channel have to do with the metaverse? And in fact, when the organizers um, contacted me about doing the session and I proposed this title and the content, they asked that very same question. And I said, okay, great, challenge accepted. It turns out quite a lot. So at Summit Tech, uh, we believe it's all connected. IMS, VR, AR, IoT, messaging as a platform, business messaging, AI, RCS, um, all of it weaved together, it's all connected, and we're gonna show you through this presentation how we can jump into the metaverse with our platform called Audience, which is an 8K, 360 live streaming virtual platform powered by 5G and edge computing. I'll be joined with, by um, Bala Tekadath from Amazon AWS. He'll be uh, remote, so I'll do a presentation first. Then he'll present the, uh, the AWS mobile edge computing wavelength piece. We'll do a demo. Um, my colleague Gavin Thomas is here as well. And then we'll have some Q&A. So a little bit about Summit Tech. Um, so we've been a leader in e-commerce and telecom space for over 20 years. Uh, the last decade, we've uh, focused um, primarily on IMS solutions for Volti, Vilti, RCS, business messaging. Um, but the last five years, we've been developing a new solution based around VR, uh, AR, and trying to weave together elements of communication, collaboration, and trying to solve the, the, the problem of how can we increase collaboration and how can we uh, create a virtual space to bring uh, together uh, events that, um, that basically can fold in all of these communications and collaboration solutions that we're talking about here today with Omnichannel. So that's business messaging, CPaaS, uh, VoIP, uh, but also bring real events like the event we're having here today into the metaverse. So let's start with the big question. What is the metaverse? Uh, is it virtual reality? Is it AR? Uh, Second Life, how many, how many of you actually had a Second Life account? None of you, I'm the only one. My avatar is floating in space in some virtual park somewhere for the last 10 years, but you know, I did have an account. Uh, how many have actually used a VR headset? Okay, quite, quite, a, quite a few, that's good. Uh, primarily for gaming and entertainment, I assume, right, consuming content. But, um, you know, I think the metaverse goes much, much beyond gaming and entertainment, much deeper than that. So a couple quotes, a couple definitions I really like that really help relate it to what we're talking about here in, in Omnichannel. So first of all, it's an immersive internet experience, uh, a world of endless interconnected virtual communities where people can meet, work, play, of course, but the, the meeting and the work part, you know, we've got, gotten a taste of that through COVID. Uh, our world has become necessarily virtual with Zoom calls and um, a lot more you know, working from home um, using virtual platforms. So we've got a little taste of that. Um, but the interesting here is, okay, they also shop. So it's not just work and play and meet, but the commerce part is, is important in terms of monetization. The second quote from the Roblox CEO, um, it's, it's a human co-experience. So high fidelity communication with a new way to tell stories. So communication is a key part of the metaverse. Um, some of the, uh, the fundamentals are identity, social, immersive, low friction, variety, anywhere, and again, economy. So um, Jensen Wong from CEO of N NVIDIA uh, was quoted saying that he believes that the total economy inside the metaverse will be greater than the, the actual economy in the physical world. That's gonna be a, a big part of it. Um, and the social aspect of, is obvious. The communication aspect is a, a key piece of it. In fact, I'll argue that the, the metaverse really isn't new. It began, you know, 100, 150 years ago with the first telephone call because we're able to uh, have this across distances virtual connection between people. Now, of course, that's evolved over time to where we today have the, the iPhone 13 Pro Max uh, with a lot more capability. Um, and if you look at uh, even the VR space, virtual reality, the very first VR headset prototype was developed at um, MIT back in 1968. But what does this mean? You know, telecommunications and, and tele-interaction engagement is a big part of, uh, of the metaverse. So in this presentation, I'm gonna cover our audience platform, which is our 360 8K live streaming, fully immersive, 
two-way interactive platform. Uh, it's very scalable. You can basically use it to produce or enhance any event from a home level event to a stadium, to a showroom, to a stage, or an event like this. Uh, concerts, sports, esports, shopping, conferences, and, and collaborations. So here's a quick taste of what this looks like. Hey everyone, quick update on Summit's 5G Mac Audience 360 platform. We are now running trials on carrier 5G networks in both North America and the UK, including spot trials at our studio in Montreal. We recently demonstrated our live 360 streaming platform with customers from around the globe. Things are getting exciting. Stay tuned for some interesting news. Until then, sit back and enjoy the clicks. Okay, so the audience platform, again, it, it's a very scalable platform. Uh, it is a platform as a service, so we've been talking a lot about CPaaS during the, the last couple days. So this is a, a VPaaS or VR Pass. It's a VR platform, streaming platform as a service, so everything lives in the cloud. Uh, we do have a client that's on the mobile device or um, the, the head mount display VR goggles. Um, but everything you need runs in the cloud. And we're going to talk about how moving the cloud to the edge, the telco edge, really enhances the experience. I'll save that for later in the presentation. So the key components of this solution, uh, starting with the zero one, uh, the camera itself. So you can have a consumer grade camera, like the one I have here. You can buy this, it's a Ricoh Z series camera. You can buy it on Amazon. Uh, or you can have a professional grade camera that's uh, much more capable and, and higher resolution. Um, but either way, you can stream directly from these cameras, uh, either directly through 5G or for, through a Wi-Fi access point. Um, so it's very easy to, just to take any event, whether it's a, a home event from a, a creator, uh, all the way up to a, a massive uh, concert in a stadium or a sporting event. The second element is the, uh, the actual client uh, running on the device, the mobile device or the handset. Uh, full multi-platform 360 live streaming client for mobile devices, head mount displays, and PC. And in the app itself, we have our ma messaging as a platform, so chatbots, uh, our full RBM, um, and other microservices. We also have carrier compliant in-stream communication services, so voice calling, video calling, you can uh, do a watch party, watch together, call colleagues and friends, bring them into the experience. Um, of course, there's chat capability, P2P chat, and also A2P um, business messaging. And on the content creation side of it, um, it's again, it's a SaaS or a PaaS platform, so everything is through a portal. Everything, is, uh, everything that you need to create an event and orchestrate an event, produce an event, is all done through a, a web portal. So what I'd like to do is, um, you know, use cases are very helpful in, in understanding any new technologies and, and innovation. So uh, one of the biggest market opportunities we see for this platform is live stream shopping, which, you know, if you look at Asia and China, it's just absolutely exploding. Um, often you have, for a single influencer, over 600,000 views per session, uh, 560 million views um, in one year, averaging 22.3 million USD in sales per day with projected results of 8 billion USD annually. So they're huge numbers. And this isn't just happening in China or Asia. This is just one example of, of uh, how uh, big live stream shopping is. So in, as an example here, um, to see what this looks like, you can imagine in a shopping mall or in a department store, you have a fashion show. And again, we're mixing modes. So we have the, the real life event with real you know, attendees in person. But we're also projecting in 360 full 8K um, stream, and it's not just a one-way stream, we can 
bring people in from the remote audience onto a video wall. You can see in the background there's a video wall. Uh, the video wall could be used uh, for presenters as well who are not actually at the, the venue. And you can see within the two different views there, one from a mobile device and one from a VR headset, um, you can see the 360 view of the event, but you can also see the microservices and the chat bots um, and uh, the, uh, the in-stream communication in terms of uh, collaboration and, and making it truly social. So let's take an, an example here of how this audience VR shopping plus RCS RBM based call center can transform a, a stodgy old brick and mortar store to a click and mortar fully digital transformation enabled operation. Existing call centers and customer care platforms can now evolve from a service once regarded as a cost to one which transforms into customer engagement experiences, generating new revenue channels through e-commerce and digital identity. RCS services can integrate within the agent's existing desktop application, connecting brands with consumers directly on a user's smartphone, no app required. For advanced service providers, businesses can provide customers with modern forms of social and communication services their customers are drawn to. Interaction with curators, influencers and vloggers without requiring third-party apps, but through native RCS bots supporting VR, AR on smartphones. The call center agent's desktop is replaced by in-store video walls and 360-degree live streaming enabling conversational commerce with modern-day agents. The following segment is one example how fashion retailers can provide shoppers with e-commerce-enabled chatbots that include video calling and 360-degree live streaming VR. Welcome to Live360 VR Shopping. With the advent of 5G, online shopping will be transformed from a flat, linear process, which is the classic website, to an exciting, immersive, interactive experience. Livestream 360-degree shopping with chatbots. Devices supporting RCS business messaging can now enable live stream shopping while chatting with friends and social media influencers or presenters just like myself, while connecting friends through social VR video calls. Retailers create RCS chatbots using their current e-commerce platform simply by publishing content through their existing partner channel process. There is nothing new to learn. Users access live 360 streams through mobile devices or head-mounted displays, connect and interact with friends or presenters and influencers, and check out through VR chatbots. For users, they experience the real-time social and interactive aspects to shopping. It doesn't get more real and engaging. For mobile network operators, a new revenue generating service. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a taste for what live stream shopping uh, can be and can be transformed uh, via our audience solution. Uh, the good thing is that this isn't just theoretical, this isn't a prototype, this isn't you know, some lab innovation type uh, experiment, this is real. Uh, we're going to be doing a commercial launch in uh, mid-December. Uh, in advance of that, we've done some trials for, with live stream shopping uh, over 5G with mobile edge computing, with uh, Amazon's AWS Wavelength uh, platform along with Vodafone here in the UK and Verizon in, uh, in the US. So here's an example of the, the trial that we ran here in the UK with a very large uh, retailer. Uh, so this is for a cooking show. And um, in the past, their streams um, that they would produce were just linear, passive, one-way. Um, people are just watching it and consuming it. There's no interactivity. There's no social as aspect. And there's certainly no e-commerce that's embedded in the, in the platform. So when we brought our audience platform in, we provided a full 360 view, so now you're the cameraman. It's very engaging. You can uh, pan around the room, um, watch the, the chef that's doing the demonstration, uh, look at the presenter or the video wall in the background, which has product placement, um, bringing in spectators that are also participating in the event re uh, remotely. Um, in this case, when uh, the chef was pairing uh, wine with the meal he was preparing, they brought in the, the presenter from the winery 
um, and they discuss the wine pairing and, and attributes about the wine. So it's a very engaging and very interactive uh, event. Uh, and it also had all of the uh, uh, e-commerce chatbots built in so you could you know, add items to your cart and check out directly within the, uh, within the event stream. So we're planning on doing a demo. Um, so these are just some screenshots uh, for folks that aren't able to view the, the, the demo live. Uh, this video will show you how we can incorporate carrier standard uh, communication services such as Volti and, and Vilti, the standards for voice and video calling over carrier networks. And of course we can do the same with uh, RCS and RBM um, and in terms of omni-channel other platforms as well. But this video shows how you can incorporate uh, a video call, kind of like a FaceTime call picture in picture while you're watching the stream. Okay, so the, the, the platform not only provides this uh, very rich 360 streaming at 8K resolutions that allows you to, to see everything in HD as you pan around the, the event, you can actually zoom in as well, something that other platforms like uh, YouTube or Twitch, uh, Facebook Live or Instagram Live cannot do. Um, and then of course, adding in the chatbots, adding in the ability to have e-commerce embedded into the, to the stream is very powerful. And the good news is that, you know, at Summit Tech, we have, we're also in RCS and RBM, we have our own chatbot platform, a map platform in our chatbot builder, um, which is also web-based um, through a portal. Um, here you can see we've added um, the, to the shopping chatbot an event chatbot, so it's very easy to create um, a VR event. Um, and once you create the, the VR event in the chatbot builder, um, it can send out invites to your audience, um, and you can, further than for each event you might want to showcase, in the case of a fashion event, you have certain items that you're going to showcase, the models that will be uh, modeling or demonstrating. So you can load those all into the platform using the chatbot builder and again the whole audience um, backend in terms of producing an event is all uh, again web-based and, and uh, a past type model. So in terms of uh, taking advantage of, of 5G and, and cloud edge computing, uh, of course 5G provides uh, much higher bandwidth and lower latency. Uh, this sub 30 millisecond motion photon de delay is what allows us to provide this full 8K immersive experience. So as the user turns their head wearing the VR goggles or turns the phone or swipes the phone to different viewports, different views, um, that information is transmitted to the mobile edge cloud and then the encoding will change and send different tiles based on where you're, where you're looking. So that is a very powerful concept uh, in how we, one uh, way that we use uh, the edge cloud edge computing. So this enables hyper-personalization, so the stream interactive um, inter interactivity is second to none. It, there's no other platform that can duplicate this. Um, the, the bandwidth reduction by using tiling is astonishing. We can reduce the bandwidth for an 8K live stream by 80, up to 80%. Uh, the glass-to-glass -glass latency is under a second, and that's very important because, as I mentioned, it's a two-way interactive uh, event stream. So it's not just passive watching a stream like you'd watch a Netflix show. Uh, you're actually able to interact with the event and uh, make it truly two-way. So the next couple slides shows what uh, it looks like with without the mobile edge computing and then adding in edge computing. Uh, so without Mac, you can see that you'll have a lot of bandwidth um, hogging congestion, not only over the, the, the wireless network, but from the cloud, from the internet, the CDNs, within the carrier network itself. And then you have much higher latency because the stream, um, the two-way communication uh, latency from the device through the cloud back to the event is, is gonna be multiple seconds. When you add edge, edge computing, all of the encoding, all of the, uh, the, the video stream viewports, the, the custom personalization is handled at the mobile edge cloud, uh, and you can see the latency is, is significantly reduced 
because of this, and, and all the congestion goes away in the network, both the internet, CDNs, and within the, uh, the carrier network itself. So this is an example of how the MEC tiling works. So you can see that what the user is looking at is always in very high quality HD or more resolution. Okay, now we're going to try to do a live demo. So Gavin's going to drive from here. If you, if you can switch, um, switch the a HDMI, please. So, hello everyone. So um, I've got here an iPhone, standard iPhone. We've got a, an Android client as well. Um, that's, that's great. So I'm going to launch the client and then just take you through um, one of the events that we've we've recorded. So this is a pre-recorded event, um, but we can do live as, as Doug talked about. Okay, so we call this um, we call this the event directory. Um, so we've got a whole series of different events um, that, that we've we've done in the past. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, one that we've done from our Montreal studio. We brought in uh, a fashion brand, uh, and they uh, presented their um, yeah, their their latest collection for for winter. So here we go. Okay, so. 360 video. Um, I'm going to turn the volume so you can just hear it. I have to tell you, Lauren, that from the minute okay. that I saw this collection, I was absolutely in love. So this is the host, okay? And uh, around the room are different stations. So there's a um, model there, um, another model here. I can also move the phone. You've probably seen 360 on phones. So I can either do this. It's really smooth. Um, it's kind of, I mean, that's pretty good representation, but it's kind of even smoother here. Um, what you can do is uh, you can zoom in as well. So we can zoom at this. This is the video wall that Doug mentioned. So we use this video wall to present um, products that, the, um, that the, the, the venue or the event organizer or the brand wants to promote. Uh, we can also d use it to, uh, to have a, a conversation from a user, a remote user, into the event. And so they, they can appear on the, on the video wall as well. And then they can have a conversation with whoever's in the, in the room itself. So it's very interactive, um, and you know, I'm the cameraman, basically. So we are sending a, a unique stream to every single user, um, so, and, and they're in control of, of, that, uh, of that stream and what they want to focus on. So in terms of shopping, so um, the, the, the host might be talking to a model and say, yeah, if, if you're interested find, to find out more, or if you're interested to buy this, tap a QR code. So I'm going to long press this QR code, and then up comes a product carousel, essentially, and I can uh, I can uh, zip through that. I can add uh, any of those to my basket, or I can just add it to, to like a bookmark for a memory. Uh, if I if I choose to add to add to my bag, I go into a chatbot, yeah, and so this is then taking me down a sales funnel, yeah, which we can either check out uh, within the app, or we can hand over to you know, to a normal web uh, web page to to finish the checkout. We've got um, different things like um, each user can, can express a bit of uh, emoticons and, and uh, 
uh, say that are enjoying this. We've got a live stream chat here. Um, Doug's been quite active. He's, um, he's sent a few messages. Um, I can have a one-to-one -one chat with, uh, with anyone that's in, in the event, um, uh, as well as being posted on the, the public wall. Those, those, all those chats can be moderated. And this is all using RCS. Yeah? So it's RCS person-to-person uh, -person and RCS business messaging. Um, so we're just building on the standard RCS stack. Okay. Have I, have I forgotten anything because I was in the demo? I don't think so. Oh, thanks, Gavin. Okay. And I've actually been on the other device in the same stream and sending messages and hearts, and, and, I, and I can see that he's in the stream as well. Uh, normally, we would uh, try to provide, do some more advanced uh, you know, intra communications, but uh, just due to the time here, uh, don't have that possibility. But certainly, you could see, uh, see it through the video. So at this point, I'd like to hand it over to Bala. So let me just put this in here. Hi, Bala. Are you there? Some reason the audio. Oh, the audio has to. to yeah, plug the audio in. And can, can you just stop the live stream? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's okay. We're right. Okay, can you hear us, Bala? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, I'm going to mute this side, but go ahead. Yes, yes we can hear you. Yep, we can see the slides. So, we started preparing for this presentation was to, to go look up what, what is the current definition of metaverse. And it, it, you know, there are many definitions, but one thing that really pops out is that it is a, it is a world that it is an alternate digital universe where things can move. People are going to be walking around to, in different simulated worlds where everything is connected. You could um, you could do all the activities that do you do in real life with other people in a similar universe. That essentially is the concept of it, right? But if you go through all these definitions and you look at all patients and um, um, and opportunities that you envision in that world. There are a couple of themes that really emerge that are 
that everybody seems to agree on, at least now, for now, is that it is going to be heavily based on a virtual reality um, simulated environment, simulated world. It is, it is going to be highly dependent on a video conversation as opposed to just text or images or just visual. And, and, and it, it all starts with being connected and being online. Everything you see in that world is connected um, through a, a communications network. Now, what is that? We know that we know for sure that all of those technologies that need to exist for the metaverse to be a reality and all these applications are still, you know, some of those technologies exist, some of them are still being worked on. You know, some we don't even know what we need. But if you, you know, peel down and go to the basics, uh, there are two, two things which are very basic fundamentally. It is compute and it is connectivity, right? All of these applications that we are talking about in the um, in this virtual world, they depend on two things. One is a really low latency, highly reliable connectivity to wherever the applications exist between the client and the server, the application servers. And two is compute. Everything that you see in this virtual world is going to be simulated. And simulated means it is going to be rendered on a compute infrastructure. So compute and connectivity are the two uh, underlying fundamental needs for any of these applications to become a reality. Now we know that uh, communication service providers are um, actively rolling out 5G networks and especially all the new capabilities that it will bring to the cellular network. Higher bandwidth, upload and download speeds that are much significantly higher than what exists today. The ability to slice and keep a piece of a network to an application so that, the net, so that application thinks that it has its own network for its own private use that they can tweak and uh, customize to that application. Really reliable, ultra low latency communications. Eventually, you know, we expect that the, the latency between um, latencies that uh, 5G networks can enable will be in the sub sub 10 millisecond. It is, you know, it's probably not there everywhere, but it's that's where we are heading towards. And and the third one, especially high uh, connection density, almost 100 times, um, you know, uh, almost a thousand times more uh, devices that can be connected within a, a, a defined coverage area than or existing technologies. So, so the communications part of that uh, equation, the, the two, two basic needs, connectivity and communications, are being taken care of by emerging 5G networks. And as 5G networks roll out across the world, we will have much more reliable, high bandwidth connectivity available everywhere. The second part is compute, and that is where we, AWS as a company, uh, are looking at how do we get compute infrastructure to where our customers want it. Right? So initially, for, for most part, people think of the cloud as being in a, in, a, in, a, in a centralized data center somewhere. And we have these big regions across the world where we host massive compute and storage infrastructure. But we are now starting to move that out closer and closer to where the devices and the applications reside. Right? So um, over, the, over the past two, three years, we have rolled out a number of products that are essentially bringing this infrastructure closer and closer to the end users and applications. So that is AWS Outpost is where you can take the same AWS infrastructure and put it in, in your own facilities. There are, in large metro areas, we have um, AWS local zones, which are smaller AWS regions that are in closer to high population areas. And then we have AWS Wavelength that we'll talk about a little more in detail. That is essentially bringing the, the same, com the, the range of cloud services into the communication network. So that really, to me, AWS Wavelength is where we are bringing uh, the compute and the connectivity together. Uh, if you look at it from a you know a traditional network diagram uh, perspective, what we're doing is we are starting to put the compute infrastructure right next to the 5G network, so so that you can take advantage of the latency and the bandwidth improvements of 5G network, and you do not have applications 
clients, um, data coming from your application clients on mobile devices as they transit through the 5G network. It doesn't have to go through the latency of a, of a backbone network through the internet to reach the application servers. These applications now have to reside right, uh, you know, right in the telecom network so that traffic coming out of the device goes straight into the application servers that are that are on the, the same cloud infrastructure, but now located uh, or co-located with the, you know, the point where traffic exits the, the mobile network. And, and why is that, um, why is that important is because it is, you know, one, it gives you access to low, it allows you to host high bandwidth, low latency applications there. Two, um, you know, when you, when, when you develop applications for the for the metaverse, there are going to be different worlds. There are going to be different uh, realms of metaverse, uh, or different virtual worlds, and you want these applications that you develop to be applicable to all, uh, to be portable and to be reused uh, everywhere, right? So once once you develop these applications uh, on AWS wavelengths, you are still getting access to the same uh, development experience that. Uh, that you're already familiar with, you have access to all the developer developer tools that uh, that most application developers today already use. You don't. There's no learning curve. I, I know that that was one of the uh, the points Doug made too. Right? There, there's no real uh, learning curve to start developing applications for the edge. And then, you know, uh, once once these applications are resident in a particular geographic area, is the same applica application that you can port to wherever we have our footprint expanding, and that footprint is expanding uh, rapidly. Uh, right now, we have these wavelength zones um, spread a lot across the U.S. Um, we have one in London here in with Vodafone's 5G network. We have uh, wavelength zones in Asia with uh, KDDI and SKT, and and more, and, and there are more coming. So. So that footprint will increase, and we are we are really trying to bring that five um, uh, G network and the computer infrastructure closer, so that use cases like uh, you know cloud gaming, uh, rendering graphics, the media and entertainment, all these applications that require um, compute intensive work to render these virtual worlds or to uh, to display those images on your screen with, with the lowest level of latency so that it is responsive for interactive applications. So those kind of use cases need the compute and the connectivity infrastructure to be closer to each other. And that is what we are we are we are moving towards with uh, with AWS Wavelength and in general our strategy to getting the compute infrastructure closer. Uh, and it and it not only is you know it's not only the applications at the end that benefit from this. It's also the end user devices that, like the VR glasses. Today, if you do not have uh, support from edge computing, there's a lot of processing that needs to happen on these client devices. If you have access to computing infrastructure that is, uh, you know, a few milliseconds away, you can offload that um, that processing power or that compute power into the cloud. So that those end devices that consumers need to wear on their head or ha hold in their hands, they're much more thin, and they are much more. They have a longer life because you know the technology or the the dependency on the technology upgrade is not there on that physical device. It's actually happening in the in the cloud, and we can you know uh, we can refresh that technology as new technologies, as new processors become available, as new computer infrastructure becomes available. So that helps with. Uh, even improving the customer comfort as it comes to the end user devices that will be needed for for messaging and for shopping and for all these interactive and immersive experiences. I know we are uh, close to time, so I will I will stop it at that and happy to to take questions at that point. Thanks, thanks, Bala. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, we are, I think, out of time. Right, Susan, or do we have time for one or two questions? One question, okay, great. We do have uh, a lot of questions coming in on the Q&A on the platform, so we'll answer those offline. But if we have any questions um, here in the room, we can take maybe one question. No? 
Oh, one in the back. Hi, just one question. Uh, how do the mobile operators look at that development? Don't they see that as a threat to their own kind of uh, space? In a way. Okay, so I'll answer that from the application side. You know, we're, we are one of these um, kind of holy grail unicorn um, use cases that that they're looking for. You know, the killer app, right? Um, so, but on and on the the wavelength, the AWS wavelength side, Bala can answer that. But you know, they are partnering with operators. They're helping the operators provide this edge compute capability. So it's it's. Um, you know, well, let's let Bala answer the question. The other question, can I repeat it for me, please? Doug, I couldn't hear the question. Can you repeat that for me, please? Yeah, oh, sorry. Uh, the question was, uh, do the mobile operators see that as a threat into their own space? But obviously, you've, you've answered that they do part Doug, can you here. repeat that for me? It's, it's hard to hear from the audience. So the question is, do operators see the wavelength service that you're providing as a threat? Is it competitive? No. Uh, the wavelength service is a, is a joint, uh, joint opportunity with, with, the, with the communication service providers. So wavelength zones are, uh, you know, it's a partner offering, right? Wavelength zones are where we are hosting the cloud computing infrastructure in a, in a telecom partner's data center for most part, right? So, uh, for example, the one in uh, in London with Vodafone. So, the AWS infrastructure is sitting in in Vodafone's uh, network. It is actually embedded in the Vodafone network. So, it is a partnership play. So, all the compute instances, you know, if you want to get technical, if you if you launch a a, a, a compute instance in the wavelength zone in London on Vodafone's 5G network, you are actually even getting an IP address from the Vodafone network. So it is all the traffic that is coming in from the devices is actually routable in Vodafone's network. So this is indeed a partner play and it is a joint uh, go to market for these applications. Right? So we are essentially enabling um, the communication service providers to offer edge computing applications for their enterprise customers by hosting it on these uh, platforms. So we go to market jointly with them. It is not a it's not a competitive play. It is a co very much a cooperative play. Okay, great. Thanks, thanks, Bob. I think we're out of time now, so we'll wrap up. Um, please come by our tabletop um, at, during the reception after the event is over. We have a, an Oculus Quest 2, so you can actually experience this. If, you, if you've never experienced a VR headset um, and never experienced this type of application, we can show you a live demo, and of course, we can also show it to you on the, on the mobile devices. And once again, thanks, Bala, for uh, joining remotely, and you know, we're, we're, uh, we're sorry that we missed you here, but hopefully uh, in the next one.